Hey folks, welcome back to the Red Riot Games YouTube channel. My name is Cyrus Davis, and today I'm going to be talking about my Arceus Giratina match from Salt Lake City Regionals, where I made 72nd out of about 850 players. Um, I started 8-0 in the event, and then had some uh, lost my last round to Grant Manley playing Reggies, and then had some rough luck uh, hitting another two Reggies and two Mews in day two, uh, which are not very strong matchups for this not necessarily this deck, but this list specifically. Um, but the the deck ran super, super well all weekend. Um, still one of my favorite archetypes in the current format, uh, especially going into Warsaw Regionals in a couple weeks. Um, I think that with a few minor changes, this is probably um, one of the best decks in the format uh, and could have taken me all the way to top eight um, with a couple of extra tech cards. Um, I think that, like, this deck is severely underrated, um, with Powerful Energy and Zigzagoon, uh, and the Double Choice Belt, you can pretty consistently turn to Trinity Nova to one-shot a Pokemon V, so you're immediately two prizes ahead m in most games. Then you get to go ahead and throw three energy on the Giratina V, and next turn you can one-shot any V-Star with Giratina V-Star, um, it just puts on so much pressure. Combine- that combined with four Marnie and a Judge, Constantly disrupting your opponent. Four paths to the peak. There's just so much pressure put on your opponent so quickly. It's really tough for a lot of decks to deal with. Uh, a lot of these Lost Energy decks are super vulnerable to Marnie, Judge, Path. Um, Giratina Beastar in particular doesn't like to be Path, Marnie early game. They only play four draw supporters no most of the time. Maybe a Marnie. Um, and they're pretty reliant on Gringe and Luminion to make their deck run smoothly. Only one stadium usually. Um, it, the deck's just super consistent, super disruptive, and a lot of decks don't have good answers to it. Um, toughest matchup being Reggie's, uh, with this list specifically, you just don't have a lot to answer the Reggie's, and they have a lot, pretty much a way to answer everything in your deck. Um, basic strategy is to go ahead and Trinity Nova onto a Giratina V, and start using Shred, and setting up a second, second Giratina V, and just hoping that they miss some attacks. Um, but, uh, overall, it not a great matchup the odds are that if they as long as they draw decently um they will take the game you just have to keep disrupting them and hoping that uh, they have some reggie hands but uh, overall deck super solid um i might talk i'll talk about a couple what what changes i'd maybe make um at the end but without further ado let's go ahead and get into my stream match from round i believe it was round let me see what was our records <laughs> i believe this was round three or four um I'm playing against Avarin J.R. Villarreal, playing Palkia and Talion. Um, this matchup's relatively close. Um, I'd say probably like 60-40 for Giratina. I beat all of the Palkia that I played against in the event um, pretty handily. Going first is a huge advantage in this matchup. Makes a big difference. Um, but overall, matchup is fine going first or second. Just if you go first, you are, have such a strong lead. Yeah, so this is my round four match. Um, prices weren't too bad for either of us there. We're just going to go ahead and get set up. My hand is pretty strong. I have a path. I have an RCS V-Star. Um, and I have access to uh, Pumpkin Boo, I believe. Sorry, I don't have RCS V-Star, but I have an Ultra Ball and a Quick Ball. Um, and a Marnie for next turn, which means I'm going to have a draw supporter for next turn. I'm going to have access to RCSV Star, and I'm going to have access to Pumpkaboo. So I just put this path in place, since my opponent's only Pokemon in play is Greninja. Um, just want to go ahead and disrupt in a little bit. Uh, I can go ahead and find another path next turn after bumping mine with Pumpkaboo. So um, we're, we're feeling pretty comfortable in this position, uh, or at least with this hand. My opponent, however, also has a very strong hand. Going to go ahead and... Open Greninja and double out of VIP pass, get everything that he wants into play. Um, so we're sort of starting off with an equal footing here. You know, he's going to get two Palkia Vs down, two Sobbles. Uh, I believe he has an energy attachment for turn as well, and that's probably all that he's going to do for the turn. So yeah, both of us sort of having the strongest possible starts that we can really hope for. It's got about 
I believe my opponent has four cards in hand now after playing all of that. So um, I top deck the RCS V Star, um, which means I don't need to Ultra Ball for it. And I actually think that I I'm, I'm, I could go for um, a swing into an RCS here, but it's much stronger to just go ahead and quick ball away the Marnie, uh, get the Pumpkaboo. And then I'm going to go ahead and play Marnie. And uh, I'll be able to starburst whatever pieces I need after. Um, I don't want to play the Ultra Ball here because then I have to get rid of a Giratina V Star, which obviously I don't really want to do. I'd rather keep them in the deck. So uh, top deck the RCS V Star means that I can just quick ball for the Pumpkaboo, evolve, and uh, go ahead and play the Marnie and see what I get. Uh, I'm definitely going to want to get a path back into play here, likely, just to stop a uh, Star Portal. Um, my opponent's only going to have one stadium that's not path, so it's uh, pretty strong to go ahead and get that, uh, keep that path in play against Polkia for most of the game. You know, it doesn't seem like a huge difference, but the fact that they have to use their training cord just to use Star Portal, um, and then you probably put another path to the play, actually does end up making a big difference in a lot of games. Well, I'm debating my Quick Ball discard here. I eye up the Grass Energy, but I definitely think uh, better to just discard that Ultra Ball. Because um, I'm probably not going to be able to play the Ultra Ball next turn anyways, uh, given the number of cards that I have in hand. So I'm just going to Quick Ball. I, I just want to get a Giratina V down with this Quick Ball. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and use Star Birth. Um, and I'm going to instantly eye up a DT here and then realize I don't need DTE. Um, so I just grab path, and looks like I'm maybe eyeing up a boss for next turn, which seems pretty strong. But uh, yeah, this seems a lot better. So I'm just gonna grab the Giratina V Star boss. I I might play next turn, but I know no matter what, I'm gonna want to get a Giratina V Star next turn. Um, and I'll be able to play that before the judge, and then I'm not wasting my starbirth, starbirth search if I opt to judge next turn. Um, so definitely better to starbirth and grab that uh, Giratina V Star in the path. Disrupt, get a card for next turn, and uh, sort of put a lot of pressure on my opponent. The Greninja's gone, which is a huge, um, which is huge in general. Greninja is such a good card; it's part of what makes Palkia so strong. Um, and having that option taken away so quickly, in combination with uh, my opponent getting Marnie down to four and a path coming down uh it just really leaves my opponent sort of uh on the back foot regardless of what he can really do this turn the most important thing for me here is um that this giratina he doesn't find the pieces to knock out this giratina v next turn which i don't believe he has he's gonna bucket get a couple water in the hand i know he has an irida so uh his hand's certainly not dead but um He's going to need quite a bit more if he wants to knock out this Giratina V. Probably just checking his prizes a little bit more here, maybe. Maybe thinking about what he wants to do this turn. And this is sort of what makes... This is sort of the epitome of what makes this deck so strong. You know, you, you Marnie, you Path... Um, you take a knockout on one of your opponent's setup Pokemon or hit into a V, which puts them on the back foot. Um, and then now I have this Giratina V with three energy on it. I have a Giratina V star in hand. Uh, no matter what, what he does next turn, I mean, you know, whether whether I was playing against uh, an Arceus deck or a Palkia deck, any V star deck, um, even if he were to one shot this Arceus V star, I have a response with that Giratina V star. I'm going to be able to take two prizes on his main attacker and play next turn uh, and leave him with. Uh, significantly less resources, and I have that judge, so I'm gonna be able to disrupt him while doing it. I only just forgot to put the evolution instance in his hand here, so I'm making sure he doesn't uh, accidentally discard it because he hasn't used it yet. Yep, so he's going to go ahead and Drizzile again. Yeah, I mean, he's having, he's having to play a lot of cards here, 
but the long story short is uh, he's gonna go ahead and evolve into this Palkia V Star and uh, put another energy on the Palkia V Star and attack. And he's gonna have an Evolution Incense in hand for next turn. That way, you can grab the Shady Dealings and Teleon and uh, keep his deck running smoothly. But see, you can already see sort of where it gets a little dicey. Um, me having put that, me, keep, like, keeping the pressure on by pathing turn one, pathing turn two, um, where he didn't get the concealed cards turn one. Um, and now uh, I'm going to judge so that Shady Dealing is going to be gone, and he's not going to have access to Subspace Swell next turn uh, unless he searches out the training court, um, which means that he's going to have to find a Melanie or a Rihon if he wants to attack a Pulky Abuser next turn because of uh, the way that his energy is spread out. So keeping that path in play, you know, just stopping Star Portal, um, like using my my V Star power just to stop his V Star power, or uh, even and it doesn't even work if he finds a Training Court. Doesn't may not seem super strong, or like pathing myself turn one and then having to find Pumpkin Boom may seem super strong, but you see where it adds up here, where like my opponent needs to find so much more while I'm disrupting him, while I'm taking these big knockouts, um, where it just it becomes sort of something where you know your opponent could always find the perfect combo and get out of it but the odds are that they won't and uh it your board becomes more and more insurmountable for them so yeah i just i, I attached before the judge just to make sure that i had another energy on board um that way i can go ahead and retreat and go ahead and just remove the energy from my bench pokemon for this uh, lost impact, I'm just trying to figure out where they want me to put the lost over the stream, um, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take two prizes. Now my opponent has just been judged. Uh, you know their hand, their board's pretty strong, but there's a path to the peak in play. Uh, they don't have a Palkia V Star yet. And uh, I still have a Giratina that can go ahead and do 280 damage again next turn if it. If I, if I wanted to. My opponent's eyeing up his options here. I think there's a Cabominable in hand. There's a Rare Candy. Um, a Water Energy. Which it looks like he's going to go ahead and put on the Drizzile. Setting up for an Aqua Bullet play. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. If this... Uh, you know, he, he's going to have to attack with Aqua Bullet here. Because this, if this Palky V star or Palky V goes down, um, it's kind of it's kind of over for him. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw a double turbo energy onto this Arceus. You obviously never want to attach the double turbo energy that you're going to discard with Lost Impact to the Giratina, because that'll reduce your damage. Um, Arceus is the natural thing to attach it to here, in case I don't Lost Impact or need to attack with it or something like that. But I am definitely just going to Lost Impact this turn. Um, I want to go down two prizes, that way I'll, and keep, and I'll still have three energy on the Giratina V-Star, which means that all I'll need to win the game is a boss's orders on that Palkia of the Right now, I'm just thinning my hand out. Um, I have a B Barrel RCS V Star, uh, an RCS V, and I think another Path in hand. So, not really anything going on. I'm just trying to put myself in a position where Boss just wins me the game. My opponent has six prizes, I have two. Um, you know, it's. I just need to draw the combination of cards eventually. Um, I'm going to have so so much time to do it because he has to set up these this awkward knockout with aqua bullet um so you know sort of have all the time in the world to find the pieces to win this game now my opponent just bosses the giratina v-star um and i top deck marnie there's definitely a case to be made for not playing the marnie here um just to make sure since i my opponent isn't doing much either um but you know Oh, if we're just draw passing back and forth at each other, well, I don't have your barrel in play. My opponent's going to draw it first most of the time. Um, and all I need to do is find a boss's orders uh, and a switching card or a double turbo energy to win the game. Um, so, you know, why wouldn't I Marnie here? Um, my opponent has access to Drizzle and Talion. He's probably going to draw top deck out of it any uh, any minute. Whereas I, all I need to do is uh, find a boss and drawing one card a turn with a thick deck is not... Not a good way to find one of my three boss left.
Now here my opponent's going to go ahead and Evolution Incense. Presumably grabbing the Shady Dealings Italian. I right, have the Roxanne, obviously you scrub the Pokemon first, but So I believe the play he's going for here is he's gonna aqua bullet. Yeah, yeah. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna aqua bullet, do 120 the active, 20 to my bench Giratina V Star. Um, and then he has this Scrabominable um, in his deck. And he's got access to Training Court still, so he's going to try to go ahead and put 120 on the active, 20 on the Giratina with the energy on it. Um, I'm going to have to attack with this Giratina with the energy on it at some point. And then he's going to attack it with, with Crabominable um, to go ahead and knock it out. Yep, so we see here Scoop Net. Uh, yeah, obviously he's going to play this Roxanne as well, just to limit my resources here. I did just play Marnie and a boss who don't need the game, so he just wants to make sure I don't find that boss. So this is where my opponent can try to inch a comeback, uh, inch a comeback here. He's going to Aqua Bullet, put on some pressure, set up these knockouts while sort of stalling me in the active a little bit. Um, now I do have the retreat here with that double turbo energy, but I'm gonna need to find a boss still. Um, and obviously I don't want to just retreat and lost impact this Inteleon, um, because then I'll only have one energy in play and um, that'll put me in a position where I actually could lose if I don't find anything. Quick balls, just gonna get that Crabominable V into play because he knows he's gonna need it. He's got the training court in hand, he's got a Raihan, so lots of options. But he's just gonna go ahead and do 120 to the Giratina, 20 to the Giratina V Star. Now, my hand, I believe, is basically nothing. Uh, I have Powerful, Colorless Energy, Be Barrel, and Ultra Ball. Uh, and here I'm just debating whether or not I should play the Ultra Ball that's in a card from the deck. Um, and I opt, I opt not to. It's definitely the better play. I just, I want, it's better to just put the Powerful Energy on board. Um, that way I have Energy to Loss Impact away. Uh, but, you know, I'm opting just staying a card from the deck. Um, in order to, I'm opting also, I think... I wasn't con necessarily considering Ultra Ball as much as I was considering um, holding the powerful colorless energy um, and then Ultra Balling away everything except the Be Barrel next turn to find a Badoo. And then the turn after that, I'd be able to Be Barrel and draw some cards. Um, but I figured that at that point, my clock, uh, I, I, I think that I'd be a clock, a turn short on my clock there to win the game if I did that. So I opted to just attach the energy to have more energy on board. Um, in case I need to lost impact. Now my opponent's going to need to aqua bullet one more time, um, in order to put this Giratina V Star on the bench in range. So I believe, yeah, we're going to see. I believe what we're going to see here is double cross switcher on the RCS V Star. He's going to take two prizes on that. Put twenty on my benched Giratina V Star. Um, and that way he goes down to four prizes and has a clear way to take his next two prizes and he just needs to find one more knockout. Yep, so the Shady Dealings for Double Cross Switcher with uh, using Rare Candy to evolve into the Inteleon. And then he has the energy in hand to retreat with. Yeah. 
yeah the awkward thing for him here here is he has the training court um that uh he could have used that way he didn't have to, he could substitute he could start portal now um and that way he wouldn't have had to treat there um but uh he can't play the tra doesn't want to play the training court because they don't want to give me access to crowbat but i did top deck i believe a research there um, so I, you know, I get bailed out a little bit. I have a lot of draw supporters in deck, so it's not super unlikely. Um, but, uh, I am going, going to find, uh, the research, get my hand moving here. And I'm quick willing for this Arceus because it's super important that I get another attacker ready. Because what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to lost impact with this Giratina. Um, and then he's going to Crabominable to knock it out. And I'm going to need to be able to t find a way to take that last prize card. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my Bidoof down, to try to find my boss next turn, play an Arceus, um, double turbo energy, and I'm looking pretty good here. Um, I have three bosses orders in deck. I have a Crobat V in hand. I have a Bidoof in play to get me barrel out next turn. I have an Arceus V and a double turbo energy, and he's going to have to training court and bump this path to the peak for me for the Crobat. Um, if he wants to use Star Portal to power up this Crabominable, and that also the training court also guarantees me an energy attachment to the RCSV next turn. So all I need to do is find a boss's orders off of Crobat Urban Barrel. So there comes the training court. Just he's making sure he has the energy and discard pile that he needs um he's gonna attach so he's gonna play the raihan to attach the bench of beast i believe or the carbominable i'm not actually sure what he's gonna search for here maybe an echoing horn looks like he's checking the discard pile to see if there's anything worth using echoing horn on Uh, maybe just something for next turn, Evolution Incense, Frost Switcher. Yeah, it looks like he's going to eye up the Cross Switcher for next turn with that Rion. Star Portal. Put two energy on the active, one on the bench Palkia. I'm not sure how many energy he actually has left. I mean, we discarded three last turn and had two more in the discard pile from his previous Palkia V Star, so at least five energy in the discard pile there, but I don't think he used any concealed cards. That might have been it. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally sure how many energy he had left. But all four of these just came out of the discard, so. Okay, so, okay, it, he opts, wait, let me, let me go back here, with this subspace swell, or star portal. Yeah, so he, he star portals, attaches two energy to the active and one energy to the bench, um, and then opts not to attach the one energy in his hand. Now, this is super, super important, because, um, next turn... If he wants to attack with that Palkia Beast, if, if I don't find the boss's orders um, and just hit this Carbominable with Trinity Nova, if he wants to attack with Palkia V Star next turn, he's going to need to retreat this Carbominable, which has a four retreat cost, not three, and he's going to need to attach manually to Palkia. So if he does, which he would likely be able to do because of Training Court, I don't know if he doesn't has another energy in deck if uh, without Training Court, but. He won't be able to do that without um, if he doesn't attach this turn, which means that opting not to attach this turn forces him to find a Melanie next turn if he wants to attack with Palkia V Star. <clears throat> He's gonna take two prizes, and here I'm just I'm just going for the boss. Um, I have three bosses orders in deck. My deck looks like about maybe 15 cards, maybe a little bit less. 
Uh, I'm just going to Ultra Ball for the RCSP Star, get out of the deck, thin my hand down. I believe I already have the Big Barrel in hand. Yeah, so we go Big Barrel. And then I'm I'm just waiting to Dark Asset for six. I might, uh, might be using Big Barrel first. No. So we're going to Crobat first. Um, I don't think it makes a huge difference, but I think Crobat's slightly better. Um, just to maximize the potential number of cards you can draw. Uh, it's important that I don't Training Court attach before using Crobat. Um, because I want, if I draw an energy like I did off of the Crobat, then I can thin an extra card from my hand by manually attaching for turn. Um, whereas I wouldn't be able to thin this card if I had already used the Training Court attach for turn. So I draw six, no boss. Um, now I get to be Barrel for three more. And I still do not find a boss. I believe there's about like eight cards in deck now. Um, and three bosses order is still in there, um, unfortunately, which means that we're just gonna have to swing at this Carbominable for 280. Um, and my opponent searched for a cross switcher last turn, so. So I'm just debating if I want to use this Ultra Ball here. I probably probably should. Um, just deciding what to discard, really. Uh, but I probably I'm just gonna play the Ultra Ball. Uh, get rid of Grass Research, and I see <laughs> you see all three of those boss in there. Let's see. Looks like about eight. Yeah, eight cards in deck. Um, I believe. With three of them being boss, just drew, I drew six off Crobat and then three off your barrel, so I drew nine cards. So I just saw nine out of 17 cards, um, so just a, above half the deck. Uh, with three boss in there, I did not find any of them, unfortunately. So we just have to swing into this Crobominable. I do opt to Marnie my opponent, though. Um, you know, if I can't, if I don't have it, I don't want him to have it either. Um, I know he, he searched for the, searched for a random card off of Ryan. I didn't get to see what it was, but it was the cross switcher. I do believe he had the double cross switcher in hand plus attachment. And here's where he, he, you know, that's a pretty harsh, um, punish for that not attaching last turn. Cause then he could have just, um, I believe he just would have a game in hand right now. Okay. Let's see. He goes Manaphy, Zigzagoon, and now we're looking at this is enough damage, um, but because he didn't attach last turn, he does not have enough energy to retreat. Uh, so if he had attached last turn to the Vent Bulky of V-Star, which he could have because he Raihond and then Star Portal, but that's what those four energy came from, um, then he could have just attached that energy that he drew off the Marnie to the active and went ahead and retreated for the knockout. Uh, to win the game there. So there actually was... Realistically, I probably should have lost that game if my opponent um, played it correctly there. Um, but obviously that is considering that I um, had that had a super, super unlikely boss whiff there um, and sort of dead drew for a few turns in the middle. So we set up for game two. My opponent's going to get to go first. Uh, I believe he has a decent hand here. Actually, yeah, it doesn't look doesn't look super good, great. I see an out to Palkia of V and an attack for return, and that might actually be it. So he's going to quick wall away of water, get a Palkia V. Uh, but he has an Irida for next turn, so it's not, uh, could be worse, but not looking like a very strong opening hand. Now, I did open Zigzagoon. Zigzagoon is the second worst setter in the deck. Punk is the worst, because then you can't get rid of Path ever if your opponent plays it. Um... But uh, you can you can live with that most of the time. Um, Zigzagoon, on the other hand, uh, you know it just makes it that you can't can't do those Trinity Nova with Choice Belt for 220, which is pretty annoying. But um, not as bad as Pumpkaboo. Now I have so actually here. If I rewind a little bit, I think. We had some mulligans here. Um, actually, I don't know if you can see my hand because of when. Yeah, so <laughs> my hand was 
like path, 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 uh, energy, double B it was three path, double B barrel, and an energy. And then my opponent Mulligan twice, and I got Marnie switch. And then at the start of my turn, I actually got an RCS top deck. So <laughs> my hand was Zigzagoon, B barrel, B barrel, three path, and a grass energy uh, before the Mulligans. And I was <laughs> not super happy about it. And then the the, the next three cards bailed me out there with the two mulligans on the top deck, uh, making it actually like a very solid start. Got to Marty my opponent turn one, an Arceus down, got an empty active with that switch, got an energy attachment for turn. Um, and my opponent didn't have any Sobbles or Greninja on board after I Martyed him and he pathed himself. You know, obviously the path on me is uh, typically pretty effective. I, I don't dislike the path play, but definitely hurts him here when he didn't really have any setup and then he's getting Marnied. Um, so now I think I'm just eyeing up what I want to do this turn. I have a lot of options. I have Quick Ball for Pumpkaboo, and I can Ultra Ball for uh, the RCS V-Star. Um, I think I was trying to figure out if there was any way that I could... Um, or no, there wouldn't be any way for me to take the knockout because of the, the Zigzagoon being on bench. Um, so I was just trying to figure out if I wanted to play Research... Um, or boss, but definitely just go for the boss on that Sobble. Um, all my opponent did last turn was bench Sobble pass, and I have to assume that he probably has a way to find Trezile in hand. Um, so definitely going to go ahead and boss for the Sobble. And I'm just going to start with for Presser's Research for next turn and double turbo energy um, to get my attack off. Oh, there it is. We go ahead and use the Trinity Nova. Uh, my opponent's pr uh, probably going to promote the Mana Fee here, um, considering he doesn't have a, like V-Star Energy Water um, to attack with. Um, he'd rather just lose the Mana Fee than have this Palkia hit in too. So yeah, brings up the Mana Fee. Draw for turn. We'll see. It looks like just attached to the Palkia V. Yeah, the Marnie, Marnie really sticking here. Looks like he has like Battle VIP Pass, Crabominable, Canceling Cologne. Cards that, you know, all these tech cards that don't really do anything. Um, I think a Training Court maybe, which isn't doing him a lot of good right now. Um, cards that you don't want to see early game. You're, you're, you'd rather use shitty dealings to search for them. Um, and... You know, I'm really just able to keep putting on the pressure here at this point, you know. Um, I'm going to get a Giratina V down. And he's going to be staring down a Giratina V star next turn. This deck is really good at just capitalizing on uh, suboptimal starts and building up a board that your opponent just doesn't have any, any way to answer. Things just... Um, once you get the ball rolling, things just snowball and things get worse and worse for your opponent the more turns that progress. Alright, he's considering his options here. I think he still doesn't just doesn't really have anything in hand. But he's gonna He's gonna show it off with the stream. Retreat, training court, trigger avalanche, and uh I draw, and I think uh, he probably concedes before. Yeah, he concedes before I end this turn. So, very, very good game one. Game two, obviously, my opponent just sort of broke off that Marnie. Um, but you can sort of see how powerful the deck is and what it's meant to do, what makes it so strong. Um, you didn't really get to see the powerful Colos energy of Zigzoon come out those games. Um, but you, you did definitely get to see every other card in the deck showcased. Um, the deck just has so many options. Uh, it's really just consistent. Um, sorry, not option. Uh, and honestly, as, as far as decks go, it doesn't have a whole lot of options. Um, it's just super aggressive and super disruptive, um, which is a classic, a classic combo. Being able to do a lot of early pressure. Um, the deck sometimes can not be super sustainable because of that. You know, you have to loss him to energy every turn when you're attacked with Giratina. 
um, and you don't really have a way to keep cycling energy back onto the board. But the you're so aggressive, do so much damage so fast, um, and your opponent is just going to see a lot of awkward hands when you play four Marnie and a Judge in four path. That the amount of pressure is just not overcomable for most decks. Now, the two things, two cards that I would like to have in this deck are Drapian and Dunsparce, just because Reggie's and Mew are super, super popular now. Uh, I was not expecting them to be super big in Salt Lake after neither of them top aided in Peoria. Um, Mew is definitely a winnable matchup regardless. If you go first, you can just like boss Genesec, boss Genesec, boss Genesec. But um, overall, um, it's so much better with a Drapian. Um, you know, finding boss three turns in a row is not, is not easy. That's for sure. Um, or I guess if you go first, sometimes they don't get the Oricario active, and then it's only two turns in a row, but still. Um, sometimes you can lost impact with a choice belt. It's not going to Mew if they did promote Oricario turn one, and you had to knock it out. Um, so there are other ways, but um, it's just like you can win going first uh, a decent amount of the time, but it's not. It's They're way better at winning going first, obviously. So, uh, having a draping in there would be really nice. I'd personally cut the fourth path of the second B barrel. Um, second B barrel is just not super useful. Uh, you only need it if you prize one. You almost never get two B barrel set up. Um, but you can prize one, obviously. That's something that can happen. So, um, it's I, it, having two is really nice, but that's probably my first cut for the Drapian. And then maybe you can cut a fourth path because your um, new matchup is going to be obviously significantly better with a Drapian. But um, Path is just such a such an amazing card. Um, and then the other card you want to add is Dunsparce for Reggie's. Um, my first three losses um, were all to... Sorry, I, I lost to two Reggie's and tied a Reggie and beat a Reggie. Uh, but the Reggie I beat, um, they just happened to, um, you know, have two games where they didn't totally set up. And um, the game that I tied against Reggie... Same thing. They had one game where they didn't uh, set up, and they they played uh, didn't play super fast. Um, you know, we at a reasonable pace, but Reggie games are long, and uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, manage the pull out the tie. Um, but yeah, realistically, probably the fourth path and the second B barrel go for the dense bar. So you can also cut the judge. Um, it really is just a fifth Marnie. Uh, it's one of the sort of those flex spots in the deck but um personally i'd probably go with b barrel path um the only reason you really play four path you almost never need it and i can cluck up your hands in the middle of the game the only reason you really play four is to try to find it early game as often as possible but um not super necessary so yeah that's the deck um i think it's super strong uh honestly my top two decks my, it would be in my top two picks for pretty much any tournament in this format. Um, in particular for Warsaw, this deck with Dunsparce and Drapian, I think um, could easily top eight Warsaw uh, as long as you play well and hit hit decent matchups. Uh, it doesn't really have any bad matchups, which is the best part about it. That is pretty much everything I have to say about the deck right for today, though. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the Red Riot Games website. Follow me on Twitter at CyrusDavisCCG. Like and subscribe, and uh, I will see you in the next one.